Lady Ada, it's new product time. New snakes. Okay, back in stock. We have the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, starter pack without, without the Raspberry Pi. Pi. That's right. A lot of people, a lot of people have Raspberry Pis now. Almost a million or more, mm. um, and they just want all the parts. Yeah. And this is a great deal. So it's like an eighty-nine dollar deal for like less. I mean, for less, <laughs> yeah, sixty something. <laughs> Um, I don't recall, yeah. but it's a good deal, and it comes with a case and stuff, and yeah. power and adapter. Yeah. Next up, this is um. Si- a massive book. This is uh, Paul and Simon's uh, Paul Simon uh, electronics book. We just got this in the store. Practical electronics for inventors. This is a massive book. Three covers. Resistors, capacitors, inductors, transformers, diodes, transistors, integrated circuits, optoelectronics, solar cells, photocells, sensors. It's pretty big. Yeah. It's actually like I would I would um I would kind of call this sort of like um like a Horton Hill, but more modern and a little bit less m- mathy. There is math in yeah. it, but it's not as physics-y. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not a physics department. It's this EE department. And it's, it is a big book, and it's kind of got everything in it, and it's a good reference text. And uh, they kind of cover it all, and this has been updated, and it's, it's very yeah. modern, I think I it, like. like I think it's good it for, covers Eagle. Yeah, I think it's good for a beginner. Um, and I'll tell you the other thing. If you look on the Adafruit uh Google Plus page and the community page, you'll see reviews from people actually uh, who do electronics, who you'll probably recognize from the show and tell and from the the Adafruit community, um, who gave their review of this. They're like, oh, I just got this this book. Um, here's my review. So do check those out. It it's has very, a lot. It's very handy. I think with like Amazon, for instance, the reviews are from just kind of general. It like, can, can come from anywhere. These are really specific ones in the yeah. community. So do look at those because they went over a lot of the stuff that's they the do, book. and it, it, it's both it's both very uh, specific and it's also very general. Like they talk about servos in general, but they're yeah. not like, oh, this is the one servo that we're going to talk about. They talk about like they'll talk about modern components, but in a, in a good generalized way, so it doesn't age. Yeah. You know, there's nothing worse than being like, here's the specific op amp that we're talking about, and the op amp is like discontinued because it's like some weird arcane part. They talk about like. They talk about all the parts you'll see without, um, I think, being really specific about like. Do you know what I mean? Like they'll they'll talk about like a stepper motor, but they won't be they won't have like a specific stepper yeah. motor part. They'll be like, this is a unipolar motor, and this is how to drive unipolar motors in general. This book, the Make Electronics book, and the Components book that just came out, we yeah. we, we carry all three. Those are really really good. Yeah, I like this book. Like it's, look, this is the best time ever to learn electronics. Yeah. It was really awful. Look, there's a section about open source hardware. Yeah, they have open source hardware. That's cool. Okay. Jumbies in there. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep moving along. Um, we got these. We put these. This is an update. This is an update. Um, so we had these really great 7-inch um, HDMI displays, and um, now we've updated it um, because I, we realized that at this, for the same price, basically, we could get like a way better version. Um, so this version is awesome. It has um, one... Uh, uh, 1,280 by 800. So it's basically actually uh, the same displays used in a 7-inch tablet. High resolution, HD resolution, and it's IPS, which means it's full, it's essentially 180 degree vision. Like, you don't get any weird polarity stuff. You can look at it from any angle, and um, it looks good. I mean, obviously, it, at a certain point, it's hard to see something because it's at such an uh, acute angle, um, but a really, really high resolution, very bright, uh, really good quality. The display used, I put the data sheet up, it's a modern um, LCD, so it's only a couple of years old, so it's really bright, very high contrast. Um, and uh, it comes with a stand now, and it has a um, quarter 20 mount on the bottom, so if you're using this yeah. photography, you love quarter 20, you get quarter 20 on the side, it's got um, HDMI, um, which is, you know, what we really like. It also has VGA standard and also um, NTSC or PAL. So now it has, uh, we gave up the uh, the previous one had um, DVI, not yeah. a lot of people use DVI. We thought if you're going to have three connectors, HDMI, VGA, and composite are it, and then you can power it from like 5 volts to like 20 volts or something. It comes with a 9-volt adapter. Uh, it's a little expensive because it's very high-resolution small display, but it is definitely worth it. This is a super, super sweet 7-inch display. Okay. Next up. I like big buttons, and I cannot lie. <laughs> there was no way Niles showed to do that. So here's our giant buttons. These are huge, amazing buttons that John took photos of. Um, there's an LED inside of them. We're going to show you the, how, what they, the, the actual size of in the overhead yeah. in a second. But look at these photos. These, uh, these are buttons. These buttons. buttons. It's hard to tell if it's like a HAL uh, computer family 
uh, reunion or like what's going on here. Um, so let's go to the overhead and you can show the muffler. Yes, I have them all here. So we have five colors of buttons and these are, um, they're big arcade buttons and I've seen these in arcades for like, um, like things where it's like, oh, like whack the button before like the timer goes off or something like little, little uh, skill games. Uh, these are really nice big buttons, and um, but they use the same uh, three quarter inch, no, sorry, inch drill. I don't remember exactly what the. I think it's one inch uh, drill hole, and you can uh, mount it onto wood very easily. There's these little plastic things that you can, if you drill holes into, they'll sit in place and they won't twist. But like you can also just nip, clip these off. Um, they come with a standard um, micro switch. And so this is kind of the, the micro switch you know and love, and it has a normally normally open. So this these two pins short when um, it's uh, it's time for the for when you uh, press the button. Uh, we have the multiple colors: so blue, white, yellow, green, and red. And then um, this one I took uh, the switch out so I could do the switch is removable if you ever want to remove it. Um, so I could show. Let me see how I open this. Yeah, so this is the LED holder. Uh, I took the LED out. I'll, maybe I'll grab one with the LED so I can show it. But there's a little LED that can go in here, and uh, it can light up. Unfortunately, because it's such a shallow button, um, and the LED is, like, right here, it, it, it doesn't light up the whole thing evenly. Um, somebody might want to experiment. If you're, if you're really interested, um, you can experiment with maybe stuffing it with some sort of tissue or something to diffuse it better. That might cause it to light up more evenly. I mean, I think the LED is kind of an extra. Um, these are pretty nice buttons, so and they're very vivid. So I don't think the LED is that essential. But so there's five different colors, so you can experiment with them. Maybe I'll I'll try to remove this one. It's gonna be a little tough to do. Um, hold on. Fortunately, once you like snap it in, it's annoying to remove. Okay, so remove the micro switch, and then. Yeah, there you go. So this is the LED. It's just a white LED, and um, but you can remove it and replace it just by winding another LED light. How deep do the enclosure need to be for these to? Uh, check the uh, product page because I have on the um, I have on the product page a uh, the, the technical whole, technical detail tab. We yeah, have all the right. measurements. Can I actually move this over? Sorry. Yeah, you want to move it over? Yeah. So yeah, that way I'm not like half cut off. Okay, so that's the uh, buttons. Okay. Big buttons, and we'll have even bigger buttons. I'm not, I'm not quite done with my button. Yeah. So I'll look at this photo for a second. Look at this. That's nice. Zoom. Yeah, you can see it's not completely even. I mean, it doesn't look... This is, you know, a photo, and photos always look weird with LEDs. Yeah. But it, it lights the center, but, like, at the edges, it's not completely lit up. Yeah. Okay. Um, next up. Okay. I'll put this together later. It's a caster. Yeah. It's a ball caster. Yeah. It's great for robotics projects. Yes. Okay. I'll go the over I got many casters, and this is the one I liked. So this is a metal ball caster, so it's nice and durable. It'll um, it'll go over carpet, wood, you know, epoxy, whatever. Yeah. Um, it fits nicely into this plastic holder, and then there's two um, screw mounts. And for the dimensions, um, check out the product page. I don't have them memorized, but it's a three-quarter yeah. inch metal ball. And what's nice about it is um, if you're using our um, uh, continuous rotation servos um, and the servos here and you have the wheel it'll be the right height for this caster yeah. so this is a good size maybe good for like a robot that weighs like a pound or two not yeah. it's not for like a huge mega robot but you'd have the caster in the front and then two wheels on the back and then you'd use two wheel drive and yeah. then this would just be a supporting someone wants to know is it loud inside of it it's uh, silent no it's silent yeah okay yeah it could be used for a sneaky robot. Okay. So uh, next up, Hacko Tips. Yeah. We got some. Long way to Hacko Tips. Um, let me uh, remove us to show the glory of uh, yeah, these so photos. Yeah, it's actually better than what I could try on the overhead. Yeah, so these are photos from John Jr. I like this. This is uh, quite these nice. These are nice photos. Yeah. And so that shows the SMT tip, um, and it's, it's nice and small. There's also um, sort of standard screwdriver tip, good for basic through hole stuff. There they are again. Yeah. And then finally, there's oh, can you go back to the hoof one? The hoof one. The hoof. Is this a hoof? The first one is the kind of a, a hoof tip or like a, I don't know, like oval tip. I don't know, but I call it a hoof tip. It's yeah. good for drag soldering if you're into drag soldering, which is some people are, some people are not. And it's also good for a larger through hole. So I'll show how you can uh, switch out the tips on the overhead. So, if you, you have your hacko, um, it's not too bad. Uh, 
this site already loose in, but if you're doing it for the first time, you might want to um, get a um, pliers. And then you can remove this collar, and then this is the tip, and then this is the ceramic heater on the inside. It's a good quality soldering irons. And then you replace the tip, and then screw it back on. Just make sure it's cold when you do this, of course, because the whole thing otherwise is really hot. And there you go. You are ready to go with your new soldering tip. So, um, yeah, we suggest, I should suggest getting like both the hoof and the SMT tip, although the SMT tip is sort of what people will want if they want to do fine tip because, uh, fine pitch soldering, because the default tip is um, the screwdriver tip. It's good for through hole, not really good for anything smaller than SOIC, even though these irons are very high quality and can do very fine pitch yeah. surface mount. Everybody wants to know, uh, and you know, uh, it's a personal question I know, and we don't do personal questions. Uh, what tip do you use? You know, I use a Metcal, okay. but I use basically the same as the SMT tip, okay. and then I use the hoof tip. Yeah, I, these are the three tips. They, these are the equivalent of the uh, tips that I use on the Metcal. Is why I bought them. Okay. Yeah. So you're like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have a size, I never, I never really need to use any other sizes. The the screwdriver is good for fast through hole. The hoof is good for when you have to heat up a lot, because the hoof has a, it's more cylindrical, so it has a lot of um, thermal mass. Um, and then the fine pitch is good for getting in there and, and getting your TQFPs. Yeah. Mind your TQFPs. Yeah. I, I don't, the etiquette is you're not supposed to ask women their age, but you can ask them what soldering tip their favorite I soldering tip is, right? I think you can do that. I think it's fine. I think you can do that. Modern age is now. It's totally fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, next up. Uh, you guys are going to love this stuff. Belts. 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 Teeth. Yeah, more mechanical stuff. People are loving the mechanical stuff lately. Yay! Okay, so what do you want to I talk about? I spent all Christmas researching what stuff I wanted to carry in the store, and finally it all came in. You know, it's all like six to eight week lead time. This is about, actually this photo um, is so much better than the overhead. Uh, so yeah, we have um, these belts, and I decided not to go with MXL belts or S2M belts. I decided to go with the GT2 belts. These are two millimeter pitch um, belts and pulleys. Um, this is a nice, strong belt, uh, made in Japan, high quality, six millimeter wide, two millimeter pitch. Um, the teeth are rounded, and it helps apparently with backlash. Uh, this belt is um, one meter long. Um, one, sorry, one point one meters long. It's you know yeah. one thousand one hundred sixty-four, which means it's like. 552. Okay. Number one question. If you cut these, pitch. how do you rejoin them? You don't rejoin these, but um, often people tend to use the one meter long because that's how long um, this would, this is, makes it um, half meter yeah. long, or sorry, a little bit more than half meter long, like two feet long for um, like a two by two foot CNC type thing. Yeah, so this is a standard size. But if you're using it with uh, something which only goes back and forth, one, like not, it's not a, a continuous rotation, you could cut it and then, um, you know, attach it to your pull, uh, not your pulley, to your, um, your motion whatever, bed. Whatever thing you're whatever moving. Whatever thing you're yeah. moving, and that's very common. And you use like sort of a staple arrangement to do that. Um, we might yeah. be carrying other sizes. We want to start with the most yeah. popular size. I'll probably carry one that's half the size and then maybe a quarter of the size so that there's a couple other options. But okay. we're starting with this. So speaking of, look what we've got. We've got pulleys. So pulleys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show these big photos here first. Look at these photos. Yeah, these, pho these photos are actually kind of better than the overhead, which is why I like these photos. Yeah, although so the overhead is looking awesome now that we have uh, more yeah, lighting. More light. Yeah. So this. there's four different pulleys, um, and the reason we have four is there's four sizes and four bores. Not like the pig, more like the uh, center. <laughs> okay, pull. we'll go to the overhead. Let's yeah, the so, overhead. Show, so show, for example, um, so these match up with this belt, so you could um, you put this in here, and then you see nice and then this when you pull this it rotates or the other way around you can pull, rotate this and it'll pull um, so um, we have for example these larger pulleys and you can see one has eight millimeter bore and one has five millimeter five millimeter um, fits very nicely onto our stepper motors and most stepper motors in general so you fit it on and uh, it does come with set screws although I didn't grab them uh, and so then this rotates and then you can you know, tie it to something else. Um, so there's a large one that's five millimeter and a small one that's five millimeter. Ooh, nice. And then we also have eight millimeter. So if you're using an eight millimeter shaft, which is common, we don't have them in the store yet because um, we haven't found a good supplier of high quality eight millimeter shafting. But once we do, you'll be able to attach this and you'll be able to, for example, you know, rotate this and then it rotates um, 
you know, the belt, and the belt rotates like, you know, whatever CNC project you have. So they're usually, they're used for, um, you know, motion transfer using a belt. And um, I think they're a good pairing. Just are very common okay. sizes used in many CNC bots. Next up, just uh, two more products, and then we can do some questions. So look at these. What are yeah, these? this was an interesting one. Um, I had never seen these before, so I wasn't sure if people would like them, but um, they do. So this is interesting. This is an uh, adjustable angle connector for the 20 by 20 um, aluminum extrusion that uh, we put in the shop a couple weeks ago. Um, so the, the, the part in the middle, it's, it's sort of a hinge, but unlike a hinge that's meant to open and close all the time, this hinge is, is meant to be fixed once you've decided how you want to um, arrange it. So one end goes, one side of the hinge goes onto the end of an extrusion, the other one goes in anywhere in the center. I can show it on the overhead a little bit. Okay. So, um, you know, this is just you attach this sort of standard extrusion with like a T-nut and stuff. And then this part, um, it's a little loosened, which is why I'm able to adjust it. But um, you know, you would you would set it to be however you want it for your project. So you're like, okay, this is the angle I want. And then on the other end, um, this isn't tapped because I'm still waiting for my tap set. But you would tap this for M5, metric five, which is standard size. And then this fits onto here. And then this provides. Um, you would tighten this up, and then it provides a lot of support so that you can um, use, you know, sort of arbitrary angles. Because right now, all of the fixtures we have are meant for like 90 degrees. This would let you do, you know, 20 degrees, 40 degrees, 60 degrees, whatever. You tighten it. It's not a super strong load-bearing um, adjustment. Uh, sorry, attachment. So this isn't something you want to like put a lot of torque on because you know this this will move and, pop, yeah. unless you use thread lock or something. Um, this connection is strong. This connection is strong, but this is it's a hinge. It's still a, it's a yeah. motion hinge. So you'll want to it's, you know it's something that will hold the structure, but it's not something that you would want to use if it, you're going to put a lot of force on that joint. So just keep in, keep that in mind. I mean, a lot of this is you know if you've built stuff, you kind of have an intuition yeah. about it. Um, so yeah, but I think this is an interesting. <coughs> Fortunately, they're a little expensive, um, yeah. but I couldn't help it. They're they're really cool. They're a, a great addition. I think um, hopefully, if, if they're popular, we'll be able to lower the price because we're buying so much more. Okay. And then last up, extrusion. These are the new version two Adafruit Flora NeoPixels. They're yes. So cute. They are so small. Okay, and here they are in action. Um, here's a here's a photo of them. Right? Yeah, well actually it's the other one, but yeah. Enough. Um, so hold on, let me set this up. So yeah, this is the new um, version two pixels, and um, let me show them on the uh, overhead. I'll actually show the that plate sort of like we were demoing before. So um, this is uh, 20 pixels, and you know they're really small, so they're kind of tough to show. But um, the cool thing is, is that unlike the previous version, which had a chip on the back, these have nothing on the back because the chip is actually built into these awesome little LEDs. And so um, they use a slightly different uh, timing protocol, so they're not backwards compatible. But going forward, will be um, only. Um, promoting these. We'll still carry the old version, but I think these are going to be much less expensive because they're only single-sided. They're also less likely to break because there's nothing on the back that is going to get in the way of your fabric. Um, but yeah, inside here, the little black dot is the chip, and we, we, we talked about these because we have them in, in strips. Um, but yeah, so we have them in little pixels, and so these are sewable, and uh, they work great, and um, Paint and Dragon wrote a great library for them. It's the NeoPixel library in GitHub, and uh, so you can talk to these uh, with an 8 megahertz or 16 megahertz processor, and yeah. they're meant for use with the flora. And then um, even though these are not the same version, I thought I would just show the yeah. idea you have here where you have pixels that are, um, you know, rainbowy and connected together and chained together um, without having to use more than one um, pin on your microcontroller. So we'll be doing um, a lot of cool Flora NeoPixel projects. And one of the great things is with this uh, new version, um, we can do double-sided electronics here in the Adafruit factory, but it kind of sucks doing double-sided. Yeah. Um, now you can fit all the parts on a single side. Yay! Okay. One side. So Makes that it much easier to use. With new products. That was it. That's great.